Dear friends. Welcome to Petrozilt YouTube channel. Today. I will talk to you about regasification of LNG. RLNG. Typically stands for regasified liquefied natural gas. It refers to natural gas that was originally liquefied for ease of transportation and then regasified at its destination before being distributed and used. When this liquefied natural gas, LNG, reaches its destination, it undergoes the regasification process to return it to its gaseous state. Regasification of LNG, liquefied natural gas, is the process of converting LNG from its cryogenic liquid state back into its gaseous form. LNG is transported and stored in a liquefied state at extremely low temperatures, typically around minus 162 degrees Celsius, minus 260 degrees Fahrenheit, to reduce its volume for easier and more economical transportation. When LNG needs to be utilized, it is regasified to transform it back into natural gas, which can then be transported through pipelines and used for various applications such as heating, electricity generation, and industrial processes. The regasified natural gas is then transported through pipelines to end users, such as power plants, industrial facilities, and residential areas, where it can be used for various purposes. ISO 55000 Asset Management Overview Principles and Terminology the regasification of liquefied natural gas, LNG, involves the process of converting LNG from its cryogenic state to a gaseous state for distribution and use. Several thermodynamic considerations are essential for understanding and optimizing LNG regasification processes. Here are some key aspects. Heat Understanding the thermodynamics of the regasification process for RLNG regasified liquefied natural gas, entails grasping the principles governing the transformation of LNG from its cryogenic liquid state to natural gas in its gaseous form. Given the low storage temperature, minus 162 degrees Celsius, during LNG shipping, there exists a substantial amount of cold exergy, 800 to 900 kilojoules per kilogram, embedded in LNG. In the regasification process, the temperature contrast between the frigid LNG and the ambient atmosphere is considerable, approximately 185 degrees Celsius, making it particularly attractive from an exergetic standpoint. Beyond the chemical exergy of LNG, it possesses a noteworthy amount of high-quality physical exergy, specifically 800 to 900 kilojoules per kilogram of LNG at minus 162 degrees Celsius. Exergy. Defined as the maximum useful work extractable from a system undergoing a reversible process toward equilibrium with its surroundings, is a crucial factor in assessing the potential of LNG cold energy. The overarching objective is to minimize energy consumption while ensuring a dependable and continuous supply of regasified natural gas for diverse applications. Heat transfer. LNG is stored and transported at extremely low temperatures, typically around minus 160 degrees Celsius, minus 260 degrees Fahrenheit. The regasification process requires the addition of heat to raise the LNG temperature to the point where it vaporizes. Heat transfer mechanisms, such as conduction, convection, and radiation, play a crucial role in this process. The heat can be supplied through various methods, including seawater, ambient air, or a separate heating medium like hot water or glycol. Energy input. The regasification process requires a substantial amount of energy input to overcome the latent heat of vaporization associated with LNG. This energy input is crucial for breaking the intermolecular forces holding the LNG molecules in a liquid state. Phase change. The regasification process involves a phase change from liquid to gas. The heat added during this process does not result in a temperature increase until all the LNG has undergone the phase change. 
This is known as the latent heat of vaporization. Temperature and pressure control. Controlling the temperature and pressure conditions during regasification is critical for efficient and safe operation. Both temperature and pressure are interdependent and must be carefully managed to prevent issues such as hydrate formation or excessive pressure in the system. Thermal efficiency. The efficiency of the regasification process is an important consideration. Minimizing energy losses and optimizing the heat transfer mechanisms contribute to a more energy-efficient operation. Safety considerations. Safety is paramount in LNG regasification. Understanding the thermodynamics of the process helps in designing safety features and control systems to manage potential risks associated with handling cryogenic fluids and the release of natural gas. Hydrate formation. Hydrates, which are solid crystalline compounds formed under certain temperature and pressure conditions, can pose challenges in LNG regasification. Each regasification process involves specific thermodynamic considerations related to heat transfer, efficiency, and safety. There are several types of LNG regasification processes, each with its own set of advantages, disadvantages, and specific applications. The choice of a particular regasification process depends on factors such as facility requirements, location, and operational considerations. Here are some common types of LNG regasification processes. Open Rack Vaporizer, ORV, uses seawater or ambient air to vaporize LNG. LNG is pumped through pipes arranged in an open rack, and seawater or air is circulated around the pipes to provide the necessary heat for vaporization. Commonly used in onshore regasification terminals. Submerged Combustion Vaporizer SCV, utilizes a flame submerged in a water bath to heat and vaporize LNG. LNG flows through a submerged coil where a controlled flame burns, transferring heat to the LNG and causing it to vaporize. Suitable for both onshore and offshore installations. Intermediate Fluid Vaporizer, IFV, uses an intermediate fluid, such as hot water or glycol to transfer heat to LNG for vaporization. LNG passes through a heat exchanger where the intermediate fluid is heated. The heated fluid then vaporizes the LNG. Suitable for various regasification scenarios, offering flexibility in terms of location and operational conditions. Direct Contact Steam Heated Vaporizer, DCSHV involves direct contact between LNG and steam for vaporization. Steam is injected into a column filled with LNG, causing the LNG to vaporize as it comes into contact with the hot steam. Used in certain regasification applications where steam is readily available. Closed Rack Vaporizer, CRV, similar to the open rack vaporizer but operates in a closed system. LNG flows through pipes within a closed rack, and a closed loop system circulates a heat transfer fluid to provide the necessary heat. Suitable for situations where avoiding contact with external elements is important. Shell and tube vaporizer. Utilizes a series of tubes within a shell for heat exchange. LNG flows through the tubes, and a hot fluid, water or glycol, circulates around the tubes, providing heat for vaporization. Commonly used in various regasification facilities. Floating Storage and Regasification Unit, FSRU, combines LNG storage and regasification capabilities on a floating platform. LNG is regasified onboard the FSRU, and the regasified natural gas is then transferred to onshore pipelines provides flexibility and can be deployed in locations without traditional onshore regasification infrastructure. These methods are widely used in regasification terminals and provide efficient and reliable means of converting liquefied natural gas, LNG, back into its gaseous state. 
Each of these regasification processes has its own set of advantages and considerations, and the choice depends on factors such as location, available resources, and specific project requirements. The most common LNG regasification processes are the open rack vaporizer, ORV, and the submerged combustion vaporizer, SCV. Open rack vaporizer, ORV, uses seawater or ambient air to vaporize LNG. LNG is pumped through pipes arranged in an open rack, and seawater or air is circulated around the pipes to provide the necessary heat for vaporization. Commonly used in onshore regasification terminals. Submerged Combustion Vaporizer, SCV, utilizes a flame submerged in a water bath to heat and vaporize LNG. LNG flows through a submerged coil where a controlled flame burns, transferring heat to the LNG and causing it to vaporize. Suitable for both onshore and offshore installations. Intermediate Fluid Vaporizer, IFV, uses an intermediate fluid, such as hot water or glycol, to transfer heat to LNG for vaporization. LNG passes through a heat exchanger where the intermediate fluid is heated. The heated fluid then vaporizes the LNG. Suitable for various regasification scenarios, offering flexibility in terms of location and operational conditions. Direct contact steam heated vaporizer. DCSHV, involves direct contact between LNG and steam for vaporization. Steam is injected into a column filled with LNG, causing the LNG to vaporize as it comes into contact with the hot steam. Used in certain regasification applications where steam is readily available. Closed Rack Vaporizer, CRV similar to the open rack vaporizer but operates in a closed system. LNG flows through pipes within a closed rack, and a closed loop system circulates a heat transfer fluid to provide the necessary heat. Suitable for situations where avoiding contact with external elements is important. Shell and tube vaporizer. Utilizes a series of tubes within a shell for heat exchange. LNG flows through the tubes, and a hot fluid, water or glycol, circulates around the tubes, providing heat for vaporization. Commonly used in various regasification facilities. Floating Storage and Regasification Unit, FSRU, combines LNG storage and regasification capabilities on a floating platform. LNG is regasified onboard the FSRU and the regasified natural gas is then transferred to onshore pipelines. Provides flexibility and can be deployed in locations without traditional onshore regasification infrastructure. These methods are widely used in regasification terminals and provide efficient and reliable means of converting liquefied natural gas LNG, back into its gaseous state. Each of these regasification processes has its own set of advantages and considerations, and the choice depends on factors such as location, available resources, and specific project requirements. The most common LNG regasification processes are the open rack vaporizer, ORV, and the submerged combustion vaporizer, SCV. In conclusion, the regasification of LNG from a processing standpoint involves intricate considerations rooted in thermodynamics and energy analysis. Leveraging thermodynamic analysis allows for the evaluation, analysis, and optimization of energy usage in the regasification process, with a specific focus on the utilization of available cold energy. A comprehensive understanding of the thermodynamic principles, exergetic considerations, and energy optimization techniques is essential for efficient and sustainable LNG regasification processes, ensuring the seamless transformation of LNG into a readily usable form of natural gas. Thank you very much for watching the video. You may consider to subscribe, like or sharing the video if it is worth doing.
Petrozilt and Unimart. Consultants and trainers provide services of asset integrity management to oil and gas production fields. Petroleum refineries. Natural gas processing industries Petrochemical industries. Chemical process industries. Ammonia urea industries. And power generation plants. Website. www.petrouni.com Email. Info at petrouni.com Phone. 0092323236775